Hi, I'm Louie, Head of Acquisitions at My Art Broker. If you're looking to buy or sell a Keith Haring Prince, here are a few things that you might want to bear in mind. Keith Haring was an American street artist. He was born in 1958, he passed in 1990, and he was an instrumental figure in bringing street art to the forefront of collectors' minds. In a way, some people like to think of him as the original Banksy because he played a key role in democratizing art. He essentially produced art out on the streets of New York and then slowly but surely that permeated people's homes. So if you want to learn a bit about Keith Haring authentication, you have to become a bit knowledgeable in Keith Haring's work in general, not just his prints, but his paintings and his drawings and how he worked. So we need to return to the 1980s and uh, specifically the New York art scene. And Keith Haring emerged probably around 1981 or so. And he was part of this general wave of artists, a lot of them who were based in graffiti and street art. It's no exaggeration to say this was an important moment in New York City. I mean, you had a lot of people doing the usual tagging of trains and subway cars and buildings. But Keith quickly distinguished himself by doing what were known as the subway drawings. Uh, these took place roughly 1980 to 1985. Posters, and they were advertisements. They would give you a time period that you were allowed to hang your poster. Let's say it was 30 days. After the 30 days were up, someone would come down to the subs and they'd peel off your poster. It was gone. You paid for 30 days, that's what you got. And in its place, they put a piece of black paper. It was like construction paper. In the meantime, Keith Haring sort of, he seized the moment. He got this idea, I'm gonna go down there with white chalk and start drawing on this black paper. And he'd do, he'd do his thing. You know, there were barking dogs, there were crawling babies. There were people who were dancing. There were winged figures that looked like bats flying through the air. I mean, his creativity, it was endless, it was crazy. Keith Haring's market has performed exceedingly well in recent years. Ever since he exploded on the scene in the 80s, being friends with Andy Warhol and a number of other important cultural figures of that time, demand for Keith Haring prints and artworks has been incredibly high. And there has been absolutely no shortage in demand in recent years, quite on the contrary. If you look at recent auction results, if you look at his iconic Andy Mouse uh, prints, for example, one specific print sold at Christie's in 2022 for a whopping half a million pounds. I mean, can you imagine that? So the type of edition that you, that you possess and edition total play a key role in setting the value of your Keith Haring print. So if you have a print that is in a small edition total and that is hand signed by the artist, Obviously, that print is going to be more valuable than a larger edition total and something that might not be signed by the artist. There are a number of things to, to bear in mind when thinking about the value of your prints. Has it been authenticated by the Keith Haring Foundation, for example? And if it hasn't, that's okay. You can get in touch with them and ask for them to have a look at your prints. If it's authentic and that they are able to deliver a certificate of authenticity, naturally, that's going to drive the value up. If they're not able to provide that for you, that doesn't mean that your print will be devoid of any value. It just means that it might not be as valuable as another print with a COA. It's important to bear in mind how specific prints have been doing on the market when thinking about selling your own. It's especially important to have a look at auction results. I would specifically recommend having a look at the major auction houses, what they've offered at auction, and what results specific prints have been achieving in the past year. However, how much you're going to make from that sale is going to differ wildly based on whether you sell at auction, in a gallery, or via a broker uh, by conducting a private sale. The whole idea is you want to wake up in the morning and if you have a Keith Herring on your wall, you want to feel the essence of Herring. You want to feel his presence in the room with you. And those subway drawings do the trick. In the 80s, there's a lot of work that Keith created um, that isn't well documented. And by that I mean, he was a very generous person. He was known to give away a lot of gifts. He was certain support, certainly supportive of charities. 
What was great was eventually this thing evolved into what they call the pop shop, a little store, but it was on the sidewalks. And they were selling all sorts of small, inexpensive things. I mean, you could buy a little Keith Haring button with a barking dog on it. They had posters, they had swatches, which were very cool. Keith Haring swatches were gorgeous. All sorts of things, you know, t-shirts, sweatshirts, a radio with the Keith Haring illustration. I mean, it was very cool stuff. But what was even better was the philosophy behind it. Keith, no exaggeration, really did want to bring art to people who couldn't necessarily afford a painting of his. A Keith Haring print is a gem. Care for it. Make sure that you preserve it from the elements. Make sure that your Keith Haring prints is in excellent condition. If there are any condition issues that you can spot, whether that is some yellowing of the paper, some undulation, some foxing around the edges, any mold at all, then make sure that you go to a conservator who can have a look at that print and who can make it look good as new. It's crucial that you do so because that is what's going to drive the value of your print back up. And believe me, no matter what they quote you for that, it is worth every penny. Because if that can double the value of your print, you'll be lucky that you did it. If a specific print has achieved a record-breaking price at auction, that is when you want to take your prints and go to an expert and get an expert sales valuation for your prints. That is your window of opportunity. That is when demand is going to be the highest. And that is also when value is going to be the highest. So keep a keen eye out there on how prints have been doing on the market. And as soon as a print that you might own has been sold at auction for a juicy price, make sure that you go speak to your art broker. There are various ways to sell a Keith Haring prints. You can go to an auction house, you can go to a gallery, or you can sell it privately via your art broker. It's important to bear a number of things in mind. If you want to sell it at auction, for example, you might have to wait your turn. Auctions occur at very specific times of the year, so if you're in a rush, that might not be the best option for you. If you're selling at auction, you also have to bear in mind that there will be a number of seller's fees involved as well. There's always a seller's commission, there are seller's fees, auction houses typically charge for shipping, insurance, and a number of other factors like that when you sell through them. If you're looking to make a quick sale, it might be worth it to speak to your art broker or to seek out an art broker that is specialized in Keith Haring prints because they probably know a collector who might want to buy your print right away. Keith Haring is the architect of street art and demand for his prints is constantly on the rise. If you're looking to buy or sell a Keith Haring print, this might be the year.